Hello, and thank you for accessing our mini session, Top 5 Configuration Tips for Concur Expense Standard in 15 Minutes. This session is part of our Timely Topics Education Series, which includes education and resources designed to speak to the current business environment. I'm your host, Naomi, and I have a few quick items to review before we get started. First, everything you see on your screen is movable and resizable using the arrows in the corners. If you have any questions about today's content, click on the Q&A widget that can be found at the bottom of your screen and we'll be sure to get back to you via email. We also have additional resources and links to support today's session in the Resources widget that looks like a folder, so be sure to check that out. And then finally, to help guide us on future topics, we ask that you complete a quick survey at the close of the session. You can find it in the widget that looks like a clipboard. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, I'd like to hand it off for our speaker for today's mini-session, Mohammed Navid. Mohammed. Thank you, Naomi. Hello, everyone. My name is Mohammed Navid, and I'm one of the implementation coaches with SAP Kankar, and I'll be uh, presenting the top five configuration tips for Kankar Expense Standard in 15 minutes. When you're tasked with managing spending and the solution that helps you manage spending, there's never a shortage of things to do. And I'm guessing your plate is already full of a seemingly endless list of to-dos. We talk to hundreds of our customers every week, so we've seen a lot of common administrative tasks that can make your program and your solution stronger. And today, I want to show you how easy they are to manage. My goal today is to give you five simple tips that will help you better manage your company spending, simple changes or tweaks you likely need to make already, should you consider making or will likely face in the future. And I want to show you how easy they are to handle so you can get back to other couple of dozen of items on your list. So in the next few minutes, we'll walk through a few tips that are easy to implement and can bring immediate value to you and your program, including how to quickly add new expense types, create policy groups to simplify the experience, use preset rules to your advantage, set up proceed rules your way, use workflows to speed up approvals. Now, before we dive into our first tip, I want to show you where we'll start all five, your expense settings page. From your SAP Concur admin page, click on Administration in the upper right-hand corner and select Expense Settings. This is where you'll start when you want to make any tweaks, improvements, or adjustments to your solution, your policy, etc. Okay, let's dive into step one. Quickly adding new expense types. From time to time, your spending, your business, or your reporting needs change. You may want to add or adjust your expense types. This is an easy way to help you better understand your spending by making sure the right spending is categorized in the right way. Maybe postage is growing expense, expense type in home world. Maybe you want to clearly delineate parking as a specific source of spending. Whatever the case may be, you can easily add expense types with a few simple clicks. All right, so from our expense settings page, we scroll down to capturing spend tile and click on expense types for expenses. From there, click on new to add a new expense type and choose an appropriate category from the defined list of categories. Once you are done, click on number two, account codes, to update the GL code for the new expense type that has been added. It's a quick way to keep your categories up to date with your spending and make sure your GL codes are aligned as well. Okay, that was easy enough, but let's be clear. Too many expense types can be confusing for users. The good news is each user doesn't have to see all expense types. You can quickly create policy groups that organize expense types based on group of users, what each group needs. So your admin folks, your salespeople, and your senior leadership, for example, can only see what you want to see. 
you can create up to five policy groups. And if you have multiple countries, you can create five custom groups for each country. So we are back to our expense settings page and moving down to the capturing spend section and the policy group link. Here, you can create policy groups and assign users, which falls under user accounts, to appropriate group. Remember, each user can be assigned only to one group. And if you have multiple country configuration, you can have policy groups for more than one countries. Again, with a maximum of five policy groups per country. Once policy groups are created, navigate back to the expense types for expenses and activate or deactivate or add a new expense type to each policy. Once done, then assign users under the user account section to the appropriate group. Remember, each user can be assigned only to one group. Okay, now we've added expense types and created policy groups. If necessary, to tighten up your control and make the experience easier for your users, so what's next? Let's talk about what rules and guidelines to apply to make the most of your system and stay on top of the spending. The reality is we've identified some best practice rules and guidelines you can take advantage of to create and improve your policy. These rules are preset in your solution and they are preset for a reason. They are there because we've seen clients have success, strength and fortify their spending and their policies by using them. So a good first step is to check out these preset rules and hold them up against your policy too. Make sure what's in your policy is covered by the preset rules. So if there is any preset rule that you could strengthen your policy. Let me show you how to get there. Of course, we start on the expense settings page, zip down to the policy tile, and select expense compliance. Under compliance rules, you'll see what's currently set for your company and what's available. It's important to read through all of these and compare them to your policy as we discussed. One helpful tip, any sentence that starts with a flag will be a soft stop, meaning the users can still proceed with submission of the report, but will get an alert about their expense. Any sentence starting with require will be a hard stop. It will block users from submitting the expense report. And another couple of tips, you see here, the flag potential duplicates rule is checked. That's a good one that we want to make sure all customers use. Another one to consider is further down on the screen than we are showing here. It's about GIFs. You can add a rule to require a comment when the GIF expense type is used. This one is not automatic, but if your organization has propensity to give a lot of GIFs, make sure it's activated. Our fourth point is about receipt rules. Look, we all know keeping track of receipts is one of the most frustrating yet important part of our expense reports. But by making you have receipt rules set up to fit your company needs, your policy can go a long way in reducing frustration and speeding up the process. And you can easily configure your solution to determine when receipts are necessary and, clearly, uh, and clear limits for certain expense types. To set up these rules, we go back to where we just left off. Starting at the expense settings page, we go back to the policy tile and select expense compliance. Last time, we were focused on number one, compliance rules, but here we go to hit number two, receipt handling. 
as you see, you can select expense types, which will always require receipts and expense types, which will never require receipts, regardless of the amount. Then you can set separate spend limits or threshold receipts requirements for cash and card expenses. In this example, receipts are never required for a personal car mileage and a company car mileage expense. However, receipts are always required for hotel and miscellaneous expenses. And for all other expenses, a receipt is required for a cash expense about $25, and a receipt is required for a company car charge if it's greater than $75. There's one more important part of receipt rules. How you handle lost receipts. By using the missing receipt affidavit in the system, you can allow users to submit expenses without a receipt. When a receipt is lost, a user can attach a missing receipt affidavit as a supporting document that replaces the receipt that allows your employees to keep expense process moving. We strongly recommend you keep the MRA box checked. And here is some simple text you can add to the fields you see here. When a receipt is lost or otherwise unavailable and all measures to obtain another have been exhausted, the missing receipt affidavit should be attached. The second field in the information or affidavit, the user is accepting in place of a receipt. We recommend using this statement. I certify that the above mentioned receipt is missing, the original receipt is lost, and I am unable to obtain a duplicate receipt from the provider of the goods or services for which payment was made. I certify the expense was incurred in connection with the business purpose stated above. All right, let's wrap up another favorite topic, approvals, and more specifically, approval delays. The good news is you can configure your solution's workflow to speed up the process along and ensure reports are getting approved expedientially. Employees aren't dealing with unnecessary delays. You can accurately accrue and manage budgets. You can avoid late fees on corporate cards. You get the idea. Again, from expense settings, go to policy and select expense approvals. Be sure the reroute to approvers manager box is checked. When it is, if an approver does not approve an expense report within a time frame you set up, the report will be escalated to their manager. So be sure to update the number of calendar days to what is appropriate to your culture and policy. In this case, you'll see the original approver fails to approve within 10 days. On the 11th day, the report will be escalated to his or her manager. As we wrap up, remember these five simple tips that have come for hundreds of customer conversations. They are easy tweaks that can help you program stay, program stay strong and help you effectively manage spending while keeping users satisfied and supported. That's it from my end. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mohammed. If you'd like to check out additional resources available within the Timely Topics Education Series, you can click through the link that can be found in the Resources widget. And as a final reminder, please be sure to complete the survey before you go. Thanks so much for joining us.